Well, now that the regular season is completely out of the way, it's time for an updated 2017 mock draft, especially because we know what the order of the first 20 picks in this year's NFL draft are ultimately going to be. And you can check out, hopefully I can fit all three rounds worth of picks in the description box down below. If that doesn't happen, whatever doesn't fit, I will put in the comments section uh, immediately after the video has been uploaded. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the notable things, some of the picks here, maybe some of the teams that I think would do really particularly well in this situation. We're going to start off at the top at number one, which always makes the most sense. Uh, you know, I really, really, really wonder if the Browns are going to take a quarterback anywhere early in this draft, whether that be they have some type of belief that they can work with Cody Kessler and make him better, or more so maybe they're going to aggressively pursue uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. And if you're the New England Patriots, if the Cleveland Browns came calling with, let's say, the 12th overall pick and maybe a third round pick, you'd have to consider the deal. You most certainly would. Now, I'm not saying that's the way Cleveland ultimately is going to go. Maybe they try and back up the Brinks truck for Kirk Cousins and free agency, so that way potentially, unless Washington franchise tags them, uh, they won't have to give up any type of draft pick compensation in order to get their quarterback. Um, Garoppolo would seem to be one that really floats out there. It's not Again, I'm not saying that's what they're going to do, nor am I saying that's what they should do. Championship teams, more often than not in the NFL, for the past decade plus, are built around quarterbacks that you draft and develop. It is that simple. You can point to the flukes and the aberrations, but you just don't go trading that much in terms of draft picks for a guy with two career starts in three seasons and expect to build a championship contender. You just can't do that. So in this particular case, I've got the Cleveland Browns taking Miles Garrett. There's a big part of me that maybe thinks that this is a draft similar to 2014. And, and it feels like that in some ways, too. And what I mean is is that even though I have Trubisky going number two, none of these quarterbacks might go top ten. You know, Or you'll have the Trubisky go, but the guy that was assumed to go first, maybe Deshaun Kaiser, drops down into the Manziel, Bridgewater, Carr type of territory. Whereas you're going to have a lot of debate over two defensive players, maybe, and who is actually the best player in the draft. Now, back in 2014, there was all the buzz and hype about Jadavion Clowney. Now, you had people like me who were arguing for Lil Mack being the best defensive player in that draft. Um, ultimately, I was right. Uh, you know, Clowney's finally started to figure out in year three in Houston, but, you know, they wasted two seasons with Clowney, whereas they could have gotten two more seasons with Khalil Mack being a stud. Imagine that defense, him and uh, J.J. Watt, my goodness. But looking at how this plays out, you know, there's a part where Trubisky could serve the role of this year's Blake Bortles in a way. And you'll have a lot of debate maybe over who's the best defensive player in this draft, whether that's Miles Garrett or Jonathan Allen. Some people may even throw a Malik Hooker into the mix, who has officially declared, and I ultimately thought he would. Uh, when you're the Browns, you know, based off of the fact they ran a lot of 4-3 alignments later on in the season, Miles Garrett is a better fit for them than if they run a base 3-4. Um, so it's not necessarily the way they should go. Unfortunately, it may be the way they have to go. Um, I've got the 49ers at number two taking Trubisky. And, and the, the tough thing about doing a mock right now is with some of these situations, like San Francisco's looking for a new coach, Jacksonville's looking for a new coach, um, San Diego's looking for a new coach. Buffalo's looking for the new coach. There's multiple teams in the top 10, so this draft could be shaken up significantly based off of who is ultimately hired by these organizations to be their next head coach, because that could shape the philosophy of the team on the field and what you ultimately want to do. So it remains to be seen, but right now, there's a part of me that thinks somebody's going to get a hard-on for Trubisky, and I don't really know why, but they're going to. That's just kind of the way I see it. So the Bears at number three, they take Jonathan Allen here. I would be somewhat torn because Malik Hooker would look really, really good at the end of that Chicago Bears secondary. But Jonathan Allen is just too good of a player for me to pass up on. You could really have a very, very nice front seven when you add a Jonathan Allen into the mix. Um, I will say this, though. <clears throat> I wish, with based off of the way the Bears uh, season went and the draft position that they have, there is absolutely nothing more that I would love than for Mitch Trubisky 
and or Deshaun Kaiser to have proven themselves worthy of top five pick consideration. Because there would be nothing I'd love more than for the Bears to be in the position to draft a guy like that and actually fully firmly believe that they are that dude. There's nothing I would love more than that. And if the Bears were able to have that guy come out of this draft, it would really um, be a major turning point in this franchise's trajectory going forward. I just don't know at this particular moment, and I'm close to giving you my grades on all the quarterback prospects. That's coming up very soon, very, very soon, as a matter of fact, starting with some of the scouting reports that are coming up even quicker than you might imagine. Um, at this point in time, though, Jonathan Allen, too good of a player to pass up. Too good of a player to pass up. And you'll notice I've got Malik Hooker going forward to Jacksonville. He's going to get Ed Reed comparisons, and I get some of that. And Jacksonville, if you put him in that secondary along with Jalen Ramsey, that could be a really scary back end of the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. And if you get the right guy in there, the right defensive mindsets, people are going to point to Tom Coughlin, and that would make some sense. You're talking about a Jaguars defense that could very quickly potentially get into the elite category of the NFL, and I mean that. Uh, Tennessee at number five. You know, this is one major change. I've got Adoree Jackson a lot higher than I ever have. Now getting to watch him some more and envisioning how he could potentially work out in the offseason, at the combine, and at pro days. I wouldn't be surprised if his stock absolutely skyrocketed. He's a big-time playmaker when you especially factor in what he could do in the return game. You'll probably get some comparisons to Patrick Peterson. You know, the Tennessee Titans in this position at number five, if there's not a wide receiver worth taking with that fifth overall pick, then they have to look at the secondary and whether it be corner or safety, that's the guy. And for me, I think Odori Jacks will make a world of sense for them. I've got the Jets sticking with offensive tackle. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Just bothering the hell out of me. Um, whether somebody like Ramjick or McGlinchey or Cam Robinson, I don't know yet. But, you know, the Jets all these years have spent a first round premium picks on defensive players and their defense still kind of stinks. Uh, at some point in time, you've got to build up that offense because that offense got old in a hurry. The offensive line is old or bad, depending on your perspective. The wide receivers are old. Their quarterback is old. Uh, the running back is old. Uh, they, they need some youth on that offensive side of the ball. Um, the Chargers at number seven, Jamal Adams, seems to be a nice fit, a long-term replacement for Eric Weddle. Uh, Carolina at number eight, you'll hear some debate, I'm sure, in this draft about whether a team should take Leonard Fournette and Dalvin Cook. At this moment, I'm in the Dalvin Cook camp because I just think he's more explosive and he brings more versatility to the table than a Fournette. Now, in Carolina, somebody like Leonard Fournette may fit their system better, but I think the better player is Dalvin Cook. And when I look at what uh, Gettleman wants to do, sorry, again, this eye is just bothering the hell out of me, shit. He likes to stick to the board and take best player available. So in this particular case, to me, that would be Dalvin Cook, not Leonard Fournette. The Bengals at number nine, taking Derek Barnett. They need another edge rusher. You know, this is a guy who tore up the SEC this year at Tennessee. Uh, frankly, in my opinion, was the best defensive end in the SEC in 2016, not Miles Garrett. Doesn't mean he's the best pro prospect. I'm just saying he was the best defensive end in the SEC in 2016. And then rounding out the top 10, I've got Mike McGlinchey, the offensive tackle from Notre Dame. I know there's been talk about he may go back, uh, but until he makes an official announcement sometime in the next week or two about his ultimate intentions, I finally threw him into the mock draft here just to kind of piece things together. And I've got Buffalo taking him at number 10. You'll probably be surprised that I have Kaiser falling. Maybe you don't. Maybe be more surprised of where I have him going in round number one. But look, Eli's doo-doo. Some people are afraid to say it, but he stinks. He absolutely stinks. And he's, he's going to be the most blasé, overrated Hall of Fame quarterback this side of Bob Greasy in NFL history. He's going to get into the Hall of Fame, and people are always going to wonder why. And that's just the truth. That's just the way it is. And when you look at the Giants, you're talking about Eli entering his late 30s, no real option on the roster in terms of a young guy to potentially take the reins. It would behoove the New York Giants to prepare for the future now. And a guy like Deshaun Kaiser, it would be a great situation because he could go and sit behind Eli, in his case, learn behind Eli, work with Ben McAdoo, and maybe give him two years, maybe three, and he could take over and then you can sit there and have the Giants stay relevant for many years to come. And ultimately, at the end of the day, when you're trying to construct uh, your Giants team and you're building your Giants team and you're looking to the future, Odell Beckham Jr. is your franchise player. He's your star. And therefore, as a result, 
You've got to do whatever you can to get the most out of him. And the way to get the most out of him throughout his entire run as a New York Giant is going to be always making sure that he has some type of capable quarterback at the helm. I know I'm a little harsh on Eli, but sometimes, dude, he'll make the great throw, but some of the decisions he makes are ridiculous. And the fact that he still struggles to hit the guy in the flat 13 years into his NFL career is just crazy to me. But as you can see, um, that's where I've got Kaiser going. You know, who knows? Maybe his stock rises as the process goes along because you get enough quarterback desperate teams. And one, it only takes one team to fall in love with the guy. Uh, but in terms of the other quarterbacks, let me flip my sheet here just to give myself a reminder. I've got Pat Mahomes going to my Bears in round number two. I, I can't lie. I'm a big Mahomes guy, uh, at least right now. And if the Bears came out of this draft with Jonathan Allen and Patrick Mahomes in the first two rounds, I'd feel really, really good about being a Bears fan. I, I, I have to say that. I absolutely have to say that. In terms of the other quarterbacks, I know I've got Deshaun Watson going in round number three um, to, I believe it's the Bills. Yes, to the Bills. And then I've got Kaya going at the end of the third round to the Pittsburgh Steelers because Landry Jones is trash. And they do, again, just like the Giants, need to start thinking about the future long term. They need to think about the future long term and get themselves a more capable backup uh, and a guy that could potentially start down the road in Kaya. Um, but these are my picks. I'm not going to run through all this crap. Uh, in terms of teams that I think would do potentially really well if this is kind of how the draft played out, I'd really like the Tennessee Titans draft in this particular case because you're talking about getting an impact playmaker in the secondary that they desperately need a Dory Jackson. Then turning back around to pick 18 and getting a wide receiver like Corey Davis, getting potentially a number one target for your franchise quarterback, Marcus Mariota. Man, you'd have to feel really, really good about that if you're a Titans fan. Um, in terms of other teams that I think would do well, you know, in terms of just players and getting talent, the Cleveland Browns would do really, really well here. If they stuck with this board, it might not mean a whole lot immediately, but if you're going up the mindset of let's build the rest of the team up and then we'll eventually go get our quarterback, or if you're the Browns and saying we're going to stink for one more year, but come 2018, you're going to have Sam Darnold, you're going to have Lamar Jackson, you're going to have Josh Rosen, the Rosen one all in that next year's draft class, you know, maybe that's the time where you'll be in the reverse position. You'll be the one being aggressive, trying to move up if need be in order to get one of those franchise quarterbacks. It'll be interesting to see what's going to break up down in the weeks and months to come. I will have another mock draft up next week um, after the wild card round. It's only going to be a one round version this time. I will say if you're going to criticize this mock a ton, there's still a lot of film work for me to do. I'm a little bit behind the eight ball right now. I'm just being honest. I mean, a lot of these guys that I've watched have watched, you know, maybe one game or two, and that's not nearly enough for me to want to actually formulate an opinion. As January starts to progress and go along, and especially once we get into the heart of February, that's when you're really going to see an explosion in terms of the overall draft content on this channel. And furthermore, uh, you'll get more... Uh, formulated rock solid types of opinions from me on certain prospects like you've gotten in years past whether you agree with them or not but this is my mock hope you enjoy it uh, if you have any questions feel free to hit me up on twitter the jeff Slagle's the twitter handle or post your questions in the comment section below see you later